Hey guys, everybody say Hyatt and Sushi. Hi. Awesome. All right, well, hi guys. My name is Jeffrey Ma. I'm a real estate broker, investor, coach, your chef and host of the night. And I thank you guys for coming out. So, yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. All right. Show of hands. Who's here? Who here hasn't done a deal yet? And it's okay. Hey, hell yeah, you're here. You're taking action. That's the point. You never know. You never get to know everything, right? You don't have to be great to get started, but you do get to get started to be great. Okay, who's a real estate broker? Raise your hands. Get out of here, guys. We don't need you. All right, how about uh, lenders? Any lenders in the house? Okay, hey, private money. I have a lender over there. How about any real estate attorneys? Yeah, we don't need them either. <laughs> All right, good. I don't have to. Have to that. <laughs> Property management. Okay, oh, hey, hey there we go. Fix and flippers. All right. Any uh, Airbnb people? There we go. Okay. Who else am I missing? Whole, you know, wholesalers. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. If you guys haven't seen each other, you know, go talk to people that you're like, oh, hey, maybe I need a deal. Maybe I need, I need a real estate broker. Maybe I need property management. Right. We want you guys to be able to network and connect with one another because this is what these events are really for because it's all about the relationships you create. It's not about the education you receive. It's about the relationships you create and taking action. So without further ado, I want to introduce my co-host, Ellie Goodman. All right. Thanks so much for coming out, guys. Um, super excited. My name is Ellie Goodman. I'm a licensed realtor with Havoff, and I'm a full-time wholesaler. So if you're looking for deals, I got some. Spring Grove, Chatham, and East Garfield Park. So if any of those areas interest you or something else, definitely talk to me afterwards. That's not my website. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I'm super excited to announce our guest, Mark Ainley. We had his partner from the Straight Up Chicago Investor podcast, uh, Tom Shellcross. He was number one or number two? two he was our second speaker and so finally we got mark he messaged me on, on facebook and i said come on out because uh, i've been an avid listener of the show and i've been learning a lot from them so without further ado mark amy my specialty is not it <laughs> or pushing buttons i guess can you guys hear me if I talk like this? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, because I think uh, I'd rather not. I, I get lazy and it goes like this. <laughs> I struggle with that with the podcast too. So, Oops. all right, cool. So my goal tonight is to add value to you guys. I have a whole bunch of call it nuggets in here. Uh, we're going to talk about leasing. We're going to talk about uh, things I've learned, things I've been burned on, and talk about different scams. Uh, but we'll go through this here in, uh, in uh, our time together and, and happy to stick around afterwards for any questions you have. Maybe they're going to give me kind of Q&A as a group. I don't know, but uh, I'm very reachable and I'll have my information at the end as well too. So cool. Yeah. All right. Got to always talk about who I am a little. Uh, raised in the western suburbs, Addison. Um, was, uh, I live in St. Charles now. My office in Roselle. Uh, investor. We did... You know, before Burr was a word, we did about 500 of them between 08 and 18. We kind of stopped because we ran out of inventory and we're running out of uh, trying to the, the scale part. That's a different presentation than Burr. Uh, property manager founder. This year we're going to celebrate 20 years GC Realty. Woo! So, uh, we weren't really a property manager until around 2014. We're just trying to find ways to make money everywhere, which way, uh, up until uh, then. Right now we manage about 1,300 residential units and about a million square feet of commercial space. One thing that I spun out of. Uh, with the residentials, we, we do some investing in industrial. It's something that we really like. License 2003, I have 23 brokers, married 13 years, got two kids, love dogs. Yeah, I think I got a picture here of uh, Charlie and the Piper. <laughs> and then, uh, but my main qualification here is I've messed up a lot. Uh, and you know, that's, if anyone's not familiar with the podcast or our origin is, uh, 
our, our goal is to have guests on there to talk about things they've messed up on so all of you guys uh, do not make the same mistakes. Um, I was telling someone earlier here, 2003 when I got started, I mean, my first rental listing was on, uh, it was an, an ad in the Daily Herald. Like this is even pre-Craigslist. I tried to find people to collaborate with. Like the word collaboration wasn't even that popular yet. So um, our ability to, for what I, all the mistakes I made in that first 10 years is things that you guys have such an opportunity to uh, not, so. We're gonna talk about leasing tonight. Um, you know, 2021, these are the, what we did management wise. We leased 245. Last year we had 294, and this year we have 108 uh, year to date. So we have a lot of uh, uh, mistakes, a lot of testing, a lot of trials, A-B type stuff that we've been working on here. So uh, what we're gonna cover today, operating uh, the rent like business, you know, casting a wider net when it comes to the marketing piece, uh, where to you market your properties, uh, best ways to display uh, rentals in the world, because I think that's changed a little too. Uh, scheduling showing, make sure your price right, uh, screening for red flags and what to look out for. We talk a little more about uh, scams uh, along the leasing and squatter side of things. Uh, it's not giving me 45 kids minutes. I took out some uh, things, so don't worry about that. I'm not gonna talk that much. <laughs> and I talk fast if you haven't realized that yet, so. You might have to ask me to go back even. Uh, one thing I wanna keep uh, in mind here to start this off is, you know, people are like, I only have one unit, or I, I, I'm, I'm just about to buy a unit, to, or, but this is not my full-time gig. No matter what, when you're buying a property, you're buying a business. You are, uh, you know, maybe you have an LLC, maybe you don't, but you're still buying a business. That business has uh, a, a, uh, two things. Your product is your, your building, your property, your, your client is your, your tenant. So uh, your revenue is your rent. Uh, your expenses is everything that uh, stops you from collecting all that as profit. So keep that in mind. I, just, you have to have this business mindset. A lot of people, uh, call I call our collectors. They collect properties, and they just kind of you know they, they get they get overall they get some benefits over the years. But uh, uh, just having that short long term strategy, and, and especially you know, I was talking to somebody in here that's got ten uh, doors a few minutes ago, and he's got ten doors, but he's doing it pretty efficiently. It's because he's got processes. He, he's he's kind of put those things in place. I'm not saying you have to go document everything, but uh, make sure you kind of find systems that work. Uh, you know, again, I always be looking out for the, uh, the legal pitfalls. We'll talk a little bit about fair housing today. Customer service, like, uh, as uh, housing providers, we ultimately are providing a cu like customer service, like no different than if you're checking someone into a hotel at the front desk. We as uh, housing providers, that, that's what we're doing. You know, you guys are always looking to improve. You're here, right? You're always looking to grow, so that's something as a business owner you gotta make sure you're doing. The one cool thing about leasing is you're able to set yourself up uh, for easier management. Right? I obviously have the background of management, but uh, we all know, uh, you know you get a tenant that doesn't call at all versus a tenant that calls 10 times the first month. You think, oh shit, what did I do wrong? So uh, think about it from those perspectives. You know, I referenced this, uh, this uh, author a few times here, but uh, you know, people that spend most of the time putting out fires are the arsonists. The people that are complaining about how horrible the tenants are are most of the people that have a shitty uh, screening system or have uh, took or accepted the sad story because they, they want to do something good so a lot of times I, I think you can speak to this across your entire life uh, as I know I can for mine is most of the problems you have uh, a lot of the problems you have to you create yourself <laughs> so if people always ask me uh, how's things going I said eh, not bad most of the problems I have are things I, I, too, I haven't figured out I, I'm too lazy to solve so are problems I created myself um, you know marketing you know, this is obvious, like having more people um, to choose from. You know, we don't, we're, we're lucky we're in a state, you know, there's other states out there that you have to do first come, first serve. So if, if uh, tenant one comes in, they're okay, um, you have to underwrite them, approve or deny them before you, you do the next one. So there's states, so we got it pretty good there. As much as we want to complain about other things uh, in the state, we got it pretty good there. Um, casting the wise net, um, just getting those options. Well, you know, when should you start showing it? Um, you know, the whole concept around um, showing, I, I've learned this too, so putting your property on the market, timing wise, um, I, I think uh, how you display your property is going to attract the certain type of person that you might attract as well too. The, you know, I learned that uh, in the western suburbs, um, you know, it's really hard to pre-lease uh, and, and get the amount of people that want to come through that, uh, that are acceptable. Um, in the north side, it's perfectly acceptable to put things on 
60 days in advance and have crappy pictures. <laughs> like, there's these different uh, uh, cadences uh, around, depending where you're at in the city. On the south side, south suburbs, we struggle to uh, uh, do any pre-marketing because you know, we tend to have uh, certain, you know, maybe C-class areas that uh, it's just hard to even have the showing be appealing. So understanding your market, where your property's at, if you can take advantage of the pre-marketing. <clears throat> Uh, creating urgency for us, you know, we, uh, you know, we're big on uh, group showings. So we, we'll talk talk a little bit about a showing tool that we use. But we try to get two, three people there at one time, and that does a couple things. That weeds out the people that suck. A lot of times people are like, oh man, if you there's three, four people there and they know they're not good, they're like, I'm not even going to bother applying because there's a good chance that these other people are, are better than me. Um, or you get the person like, man, I know I'm, I got a good credit score. I, I, I want this place. I'm going to get the application right away. So. Having kind of screw people, or it doesn't have to be showing everyone at one time, uh, but you know, having kind of back to back where people see traffic is big. It works in the sales side of things too. I'm gonna do this. Do I get any uh, slide thing? Let's see if I can put that right there. Does that feel move over? No, it doesn't. Oh, let's do this. Yeah. Bam. Yeah, that might work for good. Sorry. Alright, cool. Alright, it's a little better. Um, getting the word out, you know, so cast the wise that. So a lot of people just have one option, uh, they might just go on Zillow. And uh, but I, I still think uh, you kinda keep Zillow has the three people, uh, three different, uh, what is it, Zillow, Trulia, and Hotpads. Like, those are probably the crucial ones. Uh, the cool thing in our industry, uh, they, started showing, they started charging property managers and realtors in, in recent years to do it. And that wiped out a lot of people that weren't paying for it. But for us, we know that 30% of our traffic comes from those three sites. So make sure you understand where your traffic's coming from with that. Uh, you I always hire a broker. Um, you know, multiple listing service out there. I think there's certain parts of Chicago land area that uh, hire a broker is more effective than other places. So understand kind of uh, how how hot uh, your area is for, for realtors. Um, when you hire a broker though, you gotta be careful though, because they have usually their own screening system that they have to follow or, or their company wants you to follow. So you gotta make sure that before you actually hire somebody that uh, you're, what you're trying to achieve is <coughs> along the lines of what they're allowed to do based on their office. You know, at gosection8.com, um, GoSection8.com is something that is, uh, you know, it used to be, um, it's not affordable housing, but uh, you get good um, tra SEO traffic from there. They, they have a very high ranking, so if you're trying to uh, get people to find your place, if you have like Logan Square or whatever. Um, the reality of it, uh, a lot of people um, are like, oh no, I don't want Section 8 in my property. The reality of it, now we, we don't have that option, and it's gonna come, and whether you have it on Go Section 8 or not, but the, the this SEO juice you get from being on, I keep calling it close section eight, but uh, affordablehousing.com helps kind of boost you up, especially if you write your listing up right. Uh, social media? What's your SEO? Uh, so the, the, when you go to search something on the internet, um, uh, search engine optimization oh. is what it stands for. So um, I was talking with somebody uh, earlier today about, is anyone using ChatGPT for doing your, your all right, cool. Does anyone know what that is? Do not know what that is? <laughs> All right. So, ChatGPT, you could go look that up. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole right now. But uh, uh, it's an AI that, that you basically put in there saying, write up a marketing description uh, with good SEO for Logan Square for this address. And it'll give you a, a paragraph that you can plug in there that's usually better and get it done faster than if you did it yourself. Um, and again, the SEO piece is you want people to find you. So, think about this. Um, you know, people that are looking for a place in Logan um, or Lakeview, they might not know uh, necessarily how to look, but they just say Logan Square um, uh, properties for rent. And now, even if you're coming up on Zillow, even if it's pulling up Zillow listings, it'll at least pull yours up higher than the other people that are already on Zillow. So um, you want to make sure that in your listings you're having this, you're, you're, when you're up on Zillow in, in a place locally like Chicago, you're up against all thousands of listings at any given time. So you really want to be very granular on what you're, you're marking, neighborhood, even you know, some of these have neighborhoods within neighborhoods uh, near different things, so it's always important. And I put on the social media, I, I think uh, you know, Facebook uh, marketplace is hit or miss, uh, depending on uh, where you're at. I think 
the struggle I have with Facebook Marketplace. How many people are using Facebook Marketplace for? The thing I run into is I feel like anyone at Facebook Marketplace just does not read the ad. <laughs> and and uh, so you gotta be careful with that. But um, if you have it on there, you can easily syndicate it to all your different networks of people you know, uh, in, within your social media. Management software, if anyone's taking advantage of places like Avail or these other uh, softwares, they definitely have the ability to put it on there, post it, and then send it straight out. So, you have all these different options out there, uh, and it's just my main point is to kind of cast away, it's not to kind of get the most options you can. Word of mouth, obviously, I was telling people uh, what you're looking for. Um, you know, we were just talking about it a little bit uh, before. Um, you know, we used to have a, a very bulky paragraph, um, you know, call it 15 years ago. Uh, and then we went to more of a bullet point list, and then uh, we've gone shifted more towards just trying to uh, do uh, ads that are more SEO friendly. But I think a lot of you guys agree with you. I know my habits are that I don't read the paragraph until I look through the first 12 pictures. <laughs> so uh, having those pictures is, uh, is, is, is super important. Uh, pictures, video tours, headlines, like it's so easy to do some of these things sometimes. Uh, you know, pictures, I mean, what's acceptable now um, on, the, on the phone, I mean, the technology we have in our pocket is far surpassed anything we had uh, 15 years ago. So, and the ability to get it from your pocket into a listing is far easier mm. and compatible uh, these days anyways. But, you know, people like these, these videos, even if it's just a walkthrough, you don't, you don't have to go and, and label it and have fancy artwork or music in the background. Just having a video is huge. Um, headlines, you know, again, that's uh, you know, if you're up against a bunch of other people, you usually have a, a section to have headlines on there. Uh, invest in the, the presentation, the picture. So, you know, you might even if you're going to use a, a service, uh, whether it be uh, VHT or Matterport or, or one of the other ones that you can give these services, you might spend a few hundred bucks. But if you could use that for the next two or three times. Um, that is something that uh, you can divide by each time. So if it costs you 250 bucks to get an awesome set of pictures and a great walkthrough tour, and you can use it three times, but you now get the place right the faster and you maybe get a higher grade tenant, like that, that's an investment that a lot of people really overlook. And we'll already use it multiple times. Uh, you know, some of my pet peeves, that, you know, lighting, like, ex now here we go, like we have so little, so, so few excuses we could use these days with these iPhones that we have or, or even the, the Androids. They, you can adjust everything. And if you can't adjust it, there's an app for it. <laughs> so uh, you gotta make sure you do it. You know, nothing drives me more crazy than uh, toilet seats up in, in pictures. And snow, in, uh, in, uh, especially this time of year. If you see anything with snow, we didn't have any snow this year, but this is where you start seeing like, oh man, it's one of the markets this last time with snow. Um, consider pets. How, how many people do not accept pets at all here? All right, so most of you are pretty open to it. I, I always tell people this, um, you know, so right now the, about 50% of the uh, rental population is a nation, nationwide stat has pets. And there's like another 18% that is considering getting in the next six months. So you do knock out a large portion of your, of your uh, tenant pool when you say no like right off the bat. Because think about it, a lot of people filter this by pets, yes, pets, no. So I always encourage people like, hey, um, except small pets only, or, or putting your marketing uh, uh, dogs only, or cats only, or limit it, that way you're not eliminating yourself from the search altogether. The cool thing, no matter how bad fair housing is getting, is there's, not, there's nothing out there right now that says you can, can get in trouble for discriminating against pets. Uh, care pets and all that stuff is a different conversation, but you can never say, hey listen, you got three pit bulls, and, and uh, so you can always do it. If you get somebody that comes in and, and they have a couple big dogs, but you end up getting these, these uh, a lot of times when you leave the door open for it, you might get just a very innocent uh, uh, type pet. Now, I'm a firm believer that your pet that you're gonna bring into is a sheer reflection of who you are as a person. Think about yourself. Um, you know, when you're getting an 800 credit score, a family of four, and they, they got a golden retriever, there's a good chance that that, uh, that that family, and all these other things that you're doing in your underwriting that shows how responsible they are, there's a good chance that dog's not gonna eat through your trim and not gonna destroy your place. Now don't get me wrong, there's certain, you know, especially when you get in the city, there's certain hardwood that are very sensitive and, and you want to make sure you're conscious of some of that stuff. But I always try to encourage people to kind of keep pet options open. Uh, floor plans tour. So Kubacasa, is anyone using that? 
Oh, all right, so if you guys take anything away here, you'll get your hour or two worth here uh, for this. Cubicasa, download it, it's an app. You literally take your iPhone, I think it works in Android too, and I can scan this, this place and walk away with a, a 2D floor plan with square footages and, and you can name the rooms and all that stuff in a matter of five minutes. So it's huge. Zero uh, cost. Zero cost, yes. Zero cost. Zero cost, and if you want to add like some things into it, features of, uh, it costs 15 bucks at MO, so it's a, it's a great thing. And again, uh, pictures, it's really hard to uh, not, uh, um, to have shitty pictures these days, just don't, like, you should, shame on you. So, uh, pet friendly, I, I got the, uh, this up here. If you accept pets, embrace it. Put that as one of your 13, 25, 32 pictures that you have. Make that, you know, if, if you, uh, you know, for me sometimes, or for us sometimes, we have carpets, like, all right, this carpet's on the last leg, like, let's just get a pet, let's collect the pet fees, rent some of this. And that's they put that all towards the carpet we have to replace after this round. So make that your number two picture or your number three picture after your nice kitchen or whatever. So that's if people aren't reading it, they need to know if you're pet friendly, that will help you. No, so when does tennis screening start? Um, I always ask that question and people you get a, a variety of different answers. But you know, tennis screening starts really when they're starting to uh, find you online. If they're if they're on Facebook and, and they're asking you 12 questions that they just didn't read that, that's there, it's like, oh, you're already dealing with someone that, that's not asking all the questions. If you send them back uh, uh, four questions that they're not, uh, and they're only giving you an answer to two, that means that's a sign that they're gonna be uh, that. If they show up late, if they show up, uh, um, you know, at, uh, you know with, with two dogs jumping in the car and then they tell you on the application that, the, uh, that they're, they're friendly pets, like, uh, so these are all things like you got to keep your your spidey sense out from the beginning for the second you post it. They're email adequate, you know. And if they're, if they're rude in the in the email, um, that 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 might not be that they're rude. That's just their normal way that they handle people. <laughs> and we all know people have different uh, styles. So you know, having systems for taking calls. Um, anyone use like a, a showing system like Show Mojo, Tana Turner, or like Showing Hero? Yeah. You. So th that's huge. Um, that's something we started using in uh, 2000, Show Showing Heroes, actually, a Chicago-based company. Uh, those guys are out of uh, Skokie. But uh, the, I was introduced to this by a, a realtor in 2014, I think. So any, anytime you guys, if you guys ever put a listing on and you get like 30 inquiries in like 20 minutes, like it's just a hot listing, it's, it's been a hot market this last couple of years, this helps filter all that. So for us, uh, you know, we have Show Mojo, you go on our website. We put on there the three or four times we're gonna show it in the next uh, five days. They click and they sign up for a time that they're gonna come through. Now in order to sign up for a time, they have to answer five or six different questions. Uh, you know, These questions, some of them are disqualified. And if they disqualify based on that, they're not allowed to set up a showing. It works around, they can do it, but at that point, they're at least understanding that, that this can be tougher for them to BS their way through it. Uh, show Mojo is pretty cool, the automation they have of, you know, after you, you know, they're going to text the, the tenant, they're going to uh, confirm the tenant twice before that showing actually happens. And if they don't reply back, they're gonna cancel the showing. And these are all kind of automations and notifications you get as, as, uh, um, as the owner of the system. But they also have the, the lockbox showing systems as well too. So I have, is anyone using, showing those lockboxes here? No way? All right, so this is a big thing. I, I know we talk, we're crying a lot in the city, but uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of realtors, uh, not so much realtors, but a lot of property managers, a lot of investors I know uh, across the country are starting to use showing lockboxes. So uh, Show Mojo or Tenant Turner, you can put a, a lockbox on your, on your, uh, on your door. Uh, they have to get qualified, they have to, they have to scan their face, they have to enter credit cards, they have to do a whole bunch of stuff security-wise. And then when they get there, they get a code and they can go in and they can do showing list lockboxes. So that's another big thing that uh, is happening. For us out there in the suburbs, it's a no-brainer because people can show things all day uh, it's not all day, all night, but you know, a showing window that we require. Brentley's another one. You know, screen before you show. You know, fair housing. This is the number one thing. Like, I always ask the same questions. Um, that's one thing about having uh, some sort of a system or automation that's in place. Helps you at least ask the same five or six questions. That way you can never be accused that you ask somebody a certain question in a certain way. And if anyone ever, you know, the problem with fair housing. Has anyone ever been accused of fair housing issues? All right, so you know it's guilty to proven innocent. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's an uphill battle and, and, and it's, it's all on you uh, to do it. It takes a lot of time, it's pain in the ass, and most of the time it's just someone who's pissed because they didn't get approved. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but when you go through that process, you have to, uh, depending on what the infraction was, you know, for us, we, had, we got accused for 
uh, denying her because she was a uh, Section 8 tenant. So it took time, but ultimately I had to show the map of this neighborhood where we had 30 other Section 8 tenants within walking distance, and that was also a guy's, you know, I mean, it should have been as easy as me just showing that, but I had to fill out paperwork, I had to show stuff about my leasing process, I had to show the qualifying questions, I had to submit my application, and it's so easy. It's so easy for people to, in Chicago, they could, uh, Chicago has their own uh, housing department, they could just go file a complaint, and they have to follow up. On the state level, they have uh, their housing department, they have to follow up. So if you go file a claim, someone has to look into it. Now they might not do it quickly, but they have to look into it. And sometimes they get to things so long after, it turns into being, all right, well this happened a year ago. They'll just send out a secret shopper to your listings when you're, on, uh, when you're doing showings. They'll call, someone will call you up and they'll, uh, they'll pretend that uh, they're just looking to rent and, and they'll, they'll kind of put you in a situation where if you're not consistent, you might say the wrong thing and that's where they get you. So I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm trying to scare you. Because <laughs> it's serious, uh, you get, it's, it's, it messes you up. We talked about uh, shorter groups, urgency, lockbox, digital. You know, setting the rent prices. You know, I think we've been testing rent prices the last couple of years. Um, and uh, even before that, you know, we've always dealt with owners that uh, think their property is worth more than it, it is because they have nicer backsplash than the property getting $200 less down the street. Whatever it might be, uh, this is always something that you have to kind of understand if your price too high. So for us, we, you know, we, we have two real main key indicators that un helps us understand that we're priced too high. One, we're confident in our marketing. So if you have consistent marketing, uh, like we're talking about uh, before, if you're not getting a certain amount of showings in a certain amount of days, so for us, I think it's uh, seven, uh, if we don't get seven showings in the first 10 days, we know we're too high. Because uh, we know that if, if, if we're priced right, we'll get that. Uh, so traffic's low, that's kind of an obvious one. But I think the, the secret is to uh, tweak that quicker than later. So I have a system that uh, helps you know that. And a lot of people are like, ah, oh, it's been three weeks. It's like, no, 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 three weeks is too long. Like you should have nipped this already and dropped the price to 25 or 50 bucks because now you're, you're losing an entire month worth of rent. That's true of any market you're in? Seven showing, or 10 showings in seven days? Yeah, we're, we're pretty, if we're priced right, we're not worried about anywhere, whether it be suburbs, western suburbs, south suburbs, north side, so. Um, but we do know our times are a little longer to get to side lease on the northwest side. Uh, so we do have some specific data on that. Uh, track you have sales So if you are only getting these like, oh, I got 500 credit score, my dog died, so I got laid off, and then I had to go take the dog to surgery, and I'm bankrupt now. Like, all those sad stories, that means, keep think about this. Um, the best tenants, the best qualified tenants go to the best priced properties, the best looking properties, and get approved fastest, right? And it leaves the other tenants to just go for whatever they can get into. It's, it's sad in a way, because they just need a place to live. And at that point, they're gonna they tell your story. You know, you got the, uh, uh, you know, the, the tenant that's, uh, you know, courting you, the, trying to corner you, and they're like, hey, listen, check this out. Is, you think I can approve for this? And they're trying to corner you in the showing and just kind of uh, get your buy-in to should I apply or not. Like, if, you, if you're, all you're getting is that, that is, uh, um, that, that's another sign that you're too high. Educated buyer, right? Like, that's kind of the mindset of the, the best people uh, will, will go first. Adjust out quickly, and, and the amazing thing we found, you know, when we do price drops, we only do them like 20, 25 uh, bucks at a time. Just our average rent's about uh, 1,900 bucks. But it's amazing, sometimes 25 or 50 dollars is the difference between getting no activity and getting five, six showings within a few days. And whether it be people's filters, uh, all of a sudden it, it's in somebody's buy box, uh, it, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but sometimes just dropping it fast. Because think about this, if you got a, $2,000 rent and you get someone, you drop it a hundred bucks but they move in next week versus going an entire another month and, and you still drop it only 50 bucks and then in 12 months your net income is still way more if you went down to 1900 right off the bat. Hit them up on the renewal. It's a lot, it's a lot easier to get it at that point. Uh, things to take into consideration. So I, I think, you know, we're looking at pricing. I think it's really hard uh, to uh, really narrow down uh, area by area, but you gotta look at your media area. The supply and demand's huge. Like, people will come to us uh, today and say, I wanna hire you for property management, what do you think of your, your, your place, your, your townhouse here in, uh, in Jefferson Park? And it's like, all right, so right now there's nothing on the market, so we could probably max it out and get 3,200. But in the, in, by the time they sign up, three, four weeks later, you know, <laughs> three or four properties came in the market and they're all priced around 2,900. We can't go at that higher price anymore because mm -hmm. all this other competition came in and 
or you gotta wait for it to go off, which doesn't make sense either. So you know, the supply and demand of it, time of year. Um, I think we all got hit this past uh, fall with what used to be traditional seasons. Um, you know, so I've been in business since 2003, and it used to be, if, if you didn't have all the money you needed to make by, by, uh, by uh, really October 1st, like you're screwed. You, you had to you had a, you had to maybe uh, hustle some other way to make some money uh, until you started closing deals again after Super Bowl, right? Um, that that was kind of it. And and the last ten years we haven't had that. The the, the moving around of people, the strong rental market, the uh, investors continually buying. Like we did not have these off seasons that, that uh, traditional years have. But um, you know we I always still accounted for that. You know for us we know that between Thanksgiving and Christmas. We get more showings if it were this way. We get more showings between Christmas and New Year's, that one week, than we do between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So we know that like, we gotta get some rented because our chance to get it rented uh, after mid of November, we're screwed. So, and the problem we run into then is even when we're renting things in November, December, they're like, yeah, we'll move in January 15th or February 1st. So you run into, uh, you're still got that vacancy time. So count for that. So think about this, if, if you're trying to rent something out September, October, the, the getting a hundred dollars less, and it sounds painful, right? A uh, hundred, hundred fifty dollars less versus letting it go sit for a couple of uh, extra months, and then you know the, you got the there's a lot of risk with an empty place. You got the, you're now heating it in the winter months, so take that mind. Location neighborhood. This is a big one. Uh, the you know you might have a, a, a street of uh, single family homes, so a bungalow somewhere here. And that one house on the end, which is right butts up right next to the, the eight unit on the corner, um, that's going to get less rent that single family home than the one that's in the middle of the block. So keep that in mind, like based on the location. It, location neighborhood also, you know, if you're on Laramie versus if you're two blocks in inside the neighborhood, uh, that's a big deal too. Layout of home, you know, functionality is such a big deal. You know, we were talking about on the podcast today with our guests. You know, the functionality in a house, single family home on a 25 foot lot versus a 30 or 35 foot lot is very different. Um, and the, the way the rooms lay out and the ability to have, uh, limited to having an eight foot room uh, on a 25 foot lot versus uh, you might be able to get a, a 12 by 12 on a, on a bigger lot. Keep those things in mind, the functionality. It, a three one compared to another three one in this city uh, is it, not apples to apples ever. Think about this, you got these houses in, uh, you have these three ones that are in um, uh, Jackson Highlands over in South Shore. That neighborhood between 67th and 71st Street, those are some of the biggest units I've ever seen in the city. So you have, you have a 3-1 that's literally 1,800 square feet. But then you have a 3-1 that might be over in Bronzeville um, off of Champlain that might be uh, 900 square feet. So it's crazy and you gotta really take that into consideration. Amenities, you know, those are some obvious ones. Updates, conditions. Uh, knowing your ceiling due to obsolescence, uh, basically saying you're only, if, if maybe you only have one car garage and, and your competition is two, or maybe you have no garage, or maybe you have no parking, you're always going to hit a ceiling because someone can always go pay $100 more and get parking, and, and they're going to they're gonna find that trade-off worthwhile. So you always got to understand where your ceiling is. Screening must, um, you know, have a process in place. I'll share some with you guys here in a second. Uh, but. Uh, you know, again, back to the fair housing. If you have a process and you follow it every time, you'll never run into issues on that side of things. But at the same time, you could do it quicker and faster. Be clear in advance to uh, uh, what's required in your underwriting process. So if you're in Cook County, now you, you have to lay out that process before they click it into an application. So if you guys ever want to go to our website, you can see all the language that's the proper language you need to have uh, when you're talking about just the uh, housing amendment and all that stuff. But, it, it tells us how it's going to go, but at the same time, it, it's, it's saying, hey, you're gonna, I'm going to ask you for all these things. So when I start asking you and you don't submit it the first time, I keep busting chops or I cancel your application after three days, um, you know why, because I disclose it to you. Disclosure, disclosure, disclosure. Expectations, right? Uh, be clear on how to process take. Hey, listen, applicant one, if you get everything to me, I can have this turned around to you in 24 hours. If you don't get everything, my 24 hours won't start till you have everything in. So be clear on the time frame. Uh, know the law, it's just housing. Uh, hopefully everyone's found the just housing amendment. If you don't know, look that up. Uh, it's an important one you know, for the suburbs, you know, these crime-free, uh, they all have different requirements. You gotta be careful of that stuff. You know, I, I think the, uh, the village requirements around uh, uh, crime-free, and, and is anyone, is everyone sitting here or has anyone got stuff in the suburbs? suburbs. All right, so suburbs, man, I, there's, uh, they all have different rules. 
and, and that's something that you gotta understand before you buy that suburb. So uh, make sure that's uh, something you're looking into. Uh, I always charge application fee. Uh, you know, I see a lot of times people are like, I can't get a rent this, so I just waive the application fee. Who do you attract when you waive the application fee? The person's got nothing to lose trying to apply. Uh, back to that, uh, that sad story, people. So I always charge application fee. If you want to do something with the application fee to incentivize, say application fee will be uh, applied towards your moving costs if you're approved. That way you're still giving them that 60 or $50, whatever your application fee is value, an incentive to get them to apply, but you're not uh, running a bunch of applications uh, for a bunch of people that just are, see what goes, throwing against the wall and see what sticks. Screen fast. Um, you know, we live in this urgency world today, right? Uh, everyone wants everything yesterday. And your tenants do too. So if you get a good te tenant, get everything you can as fast as you can and, uh, and get them in so they don't go somewhere else. So on here, this is our rental matrix. So in 2013, we put this together. And I'll, I'll give you guys an offer to if you guys want to copy this later. But uh, yeah, I was underwriting everything in our company in 2013. I said, man, we're never going to grow if I have to do this. So I basically took a mind dump and, and I created this matrix so we can have other people do the screening. Now, this does a couple things. One, it, uh, I can lay out the expectation for anyone trying to apply. Two, it protects me against fair housing because everyone that we're scoring or we're rating is based on this. And three, it has a very clear system of how we uh, charge security deposits and, and everything else. So uh, we call it a rental matrix. I'll, I'll offer it to you guys here. Uh, look for red flags. Um, anyone use pet, PetScreening.com? Oh, man. So this is another nugget here, man. PetScreening.com is awesome. So how many times have you gotten this assistant pet that you're like, damn, I know that's not an assistant pet. <laughs> <laughs> man, and, and it just never is. But we're all scared, right? We're scared to like even call them out or question them because uh, usually the scams are very defensive right away. <laughs> so, but PetScreen.com, it's an add-on to your application process. If they have a pet, it's, you know, I think they charge 20 bucks. If it's a legit pet, um, if it's an assistant pet, they don't charge anything. But it makes them jump through a whole bunch of hoops. It makes them uh, up upload the proper documentation. In their database, they have the system of who the fraud Indian doctors are that are, are you go out of 50 bucks and, and, and download it in 10 minutes. So they have all that stuff, and they make you jump through these hoops, and, and then, uh, and then they, they're kind of your layer of protection to prevent you from getting into the, um, the, uh, all the different legal issues you get into it. Um, PetScreen.com, check it out. Also, they encourage that even if you don't have a pet, you go there and fill it out, and you're signing off on a bunch of things that you don't have a pet now, but you might go get a pet. These are all the expectations we have as a company that you're gonna have to jump through with that pet. Pet selfies, I love it. So if you get a, get a pet, make them give a pet selfie. It's too easy these days to go, uh, generate these images of, uh, and for us, we got sick of like, oh, it's a nice, uh, nice little uh, uh, lab, but man, like that lab, didn't, now it looks like a pit bull at movement. So it's like, <laughs> we wouldn't accept the pit bull, now it's made you live. Like, so it, it starts like all these different issues. So um, pet screen, or pet selfie is something we did for a while. Um, don't discount sales, uh, short sales or bankruptcy. Short sales aren't as big now. I've, I'm seeing more and more happen, but a lot of times short sales are, are strategic as are bankruptcies. Um, if uh, you know, you might charge them more or do something to kind of offset maybe their risk, and they're usually more willing to pay it. But think about this: bankruptcy. Some people do it strategically. Maybe they come out of divorce. I love bankruptcies that are like that because who do they owe money to? Nobody, just you. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. There's the person that's like, oh yeah, I filed BK. Uh, we, what can you accept? Like, well, look, yeah, we probably would kind of work with it. But then you pull their credit and like, hey, you filed bankruptcy every three years for the last decade. Like, uh -huh. like <laughs> and you already have you know, debt since your last one already. So um, it's important for us. For bankruptcy, sometimes you might take somebody on that uh, is maybe coming fresh out of divorce, and they. Um, you know, their, their bankruptcy's maybe not even finished, we'll make them put on a letter, we'll have their attorney, we'll make them give us something from their attorney that GC Realty Development is excluded from their current bankruptcy case. I don't think they can put you in there anyways, but we put that in there as a piece of buy. And again, people with bankruptcies and short sales, they're usually willing to jump through most hoops that you're willing to ask for, so. Um, you know, check social media for pets. Like, you know, this is something that so many people don't do. Like. The stuff that we find on people's social media pages, or like, oh, that's four pets in your house, and, and, and not just the one pet that you took the selfie with. Um, you know, people, you know, man, we had a guy a few weeks ago that uh, basically his Facebook page was uh, um, all tatted up. I couldn't tell you what that's mean, but I mean, he's just sitting there like this with two guns. It's like, oh man, like that is not. <laughs> that is not like you're not. I, I told him, I said, dude, like man, like why are you having up? Like I, I, I came and like. 
I can't present it to my boss. Like, uh, it's like, I can change it. I'm like, it's too late. You already saw it, man. Like, I, I can't, like, you got to change that, man. Like, that's not going to get you anywhere productive in this world. Uh, but yeah, uh, pictures occur at home. So a lot of times you're taking pictures, you're, you're in your house. So now you can see a way into their house, how they're living. You can see that uh, they party every Saturday, whatever it might not be. So. Is there any line in terms of like going in and judging people's social media? Because I use Facebook all the time. I worry that I'm like, am I being biased in any way? Like, you know, like saying like that doesn't look like a good risk to me or something like that? Well, listen, I had that off uh, kind of record conversation with a guy that like, he's a younger guy. I'm like, you're like, you're not, you're just, life's gonna be rough, man, if you keep trying to present yourself as a uh, uh, game playing as silly as I was saying, something like that. But uh, well, it's kind of off record. And, and he ultimately got denied for other reasons. But I think if you're going to go on there and you're going to make the judgments, obviously you want to always, as uh, your own personal character, to make sure you're not being too judgmental. I try to I to pull myself back sometimes. But, and you read into things too much too. I'm sure uh, uh, we, we're, we're human, we do that. But I, I think as long as you're not like, hey man, I went to your LinkedIn and, and this is, this is uh, I, I don't believe that that's, as long as you're not denying them based on some of those things you're finding on there and you're looping it back to some other factual thing that maybe you, by you going on social media now kind of, brought that story together, and it's not the story that he's, that, that, that he's trying to tell. So I think is avoiding denying him based on that, I think it's your saying yeah. I mean, not to, not to take a choice, but like, I've sort of set parameters on Facebook Marketplace where I say, if I see too much swearing in posts, or like, you know, like, guy smoking a blunt, like on his, on his, you know, his cover page, like, I'm just like, I'm not clicking through the door. Like, I'm just not engaging. Is that, and I like, when, Fair housing violation? Well, I think it in the fair housing side, as long as you do it with everybody. I think that's what they're, they're looking for. So. I, I have a question. Sure. Um, so, when you're receiving applications, like, um, you're not going to be searching for their, for their social media on the spot, but, like, you could get an application with a common name, right? How are you going to, I mean, you're not going to remember everyone's face. No, I, well, you got, uh, you'll got. you have their ID, you'll have uh, some of those oh, other okay. things. So there, there's different things you should, you should be able to find. There, there's plenty of uh, Martha Garcia's first like, common name that we had one the other day that we were looking up and we had we had to drill through and figure out which Martha, Martha it was like a Martha Garcia in Chicago. I was like, oh yeah. man, like that, that was tough, but we found her, so. Okay. But you start tying it back to their, their job and stuff like that, you usually okay. kind of start seeing the things. Right. Uh, previous rent, um, you know, for us we used to collect the uh, the checks. Now we know now a lot of times people are showing proof of uh, who they're paying. Man, it's really easy for people to push through like all this other fake stuff around uh, these automated payments. So make sure that who they're quick paying money to is the person that uh, that is on there as a landlord and is on the tax record of the property. That uh, that's another thing. If, if you're a realtor or you're public record wise, um, the previous landlord. I always like that tells a story. The previous landlord um, is John Smith. They're paying payments to uh, uh, Dean Smith. Like there, there's a story here. Some of you got to You got to You got to a lot of what we look for in the red flags is you're always searching out the worst case scenario. And now it's like, hey, this doesn't line up, can you give an explanation? And now you gotta, now you gotta see what their explanation is and if that comes back legit or not. Uh, collect references and emergency contact. Listen, I love, what part of our collection process is we don't hear back from them like in two days, we call it emergency contact. Who's their emergency contact usually? Gus, mom. We're so worried about Fran. Like she hasn't gotten back to us. Like, uh, can you help? Oh man, Fran. She, she, she. I'll call her right now. And, and then, then Fran doesn't want to hear from Mom uh, doing that. So usually she'll respond. She'll at least start communicating back better with us. And that usually loops in a shape. Um, you know, there's different options out there. So you know, we um, outsourcing some of the screening too. So if, if you ever want to outsource it, there's places like Virtually Incredible. There's a handful more now that you could basically have them underwrite to all this due diligence uh, under the framework that you want to underwrite people for. Uh, so scams, so one of the bigger scams, uh, there's a lot of scams out there right now. So it's, it's crazy with technology. Uh, you know, you have these people, you know, one of them, I don't know if any, hopefully no one's ever been picked in this one, but uh, we have where you have uh, your listing that you're trying to rent for $2,000, shows up on Facebook for $1,000, and and some person not realizing, it, I, I think, the, the tenants are part of the, the, the like, it's, you want to shake the tenants, you're like, come on, man, how'd you think that you were going to get that for a thousand bucks? And you put us all in this, this, this bad situation, but they're doing it, and, and they're, they're sending money out, and, and all of a sudden these people are moving in, or 
they're, hey, I just sent, a, we get a lot of these calls, like, hey, I just sent 60 bucks, and now I said I feel like it's a scam. It, is it a scam? So, like, we probably get one of those a week that we're literally, someone's calling us up from Georgia, and we're, we're saying, yeah, no, no, that was a scam. So, one of the things that we've done around this, the, the squatter issues to prevent that type of scam is we put uh, signs on the uh, um, doors. Like, if anyone asks you to, to send money anywhere other than uh, Zelle or, or to our office at this address, you've been ripped off. So we have a couple of those on there because what these uh, scammers will do is they'll, they might get the lockbox code somehow or, or whatnot, and they will uh, then get them into the house and then they'll say, oh, I'll just send the money if you want to take it off the market. So uh, the person that's doing scams is never local and usually they send the people by and, and, oh, I couldn't get you in, but I, I don't want you to lose this place, so send me over 400 bucks and I'll take it off the market and, and, and so forth. So if you have that sign on that front door, that's one way you can prevent that. Uh, definitely do not hand out lockbox codes to uh, uh, you know people. I, I know, I, I know a few landlords, man. That uh, ah, I, I've got time to get over there, or it's like ah, I'd rather go do this, and it's like I'll just give them the combo and I'll change the combo tomorrow. So they never change the combo tomorrow. That's the first thing I always call them out for. But uh, it's just not a good habit to, to be in. Um, you know, considering not leaving a lockbox at all uh, at the property, I think most of the issues we run into is somebody broke into the, the lockbox. Man, these lockboxes that you get. Um, at landlord box or wherever you get them, it, you can destroy them really easy. So um, the cool thing, they'll show in this lockbox is they're a little more, they're kind of, if anyone's a realtor, it's, they're similar to like the realtor boxes. Notices on the front door, you know, you know, there's laws around putting camera type stuff up there if you're not really recording, but you know, if you're popping it in the window or whatever, it deters people. Uh, the other big scam we have right now is the, uh, the one, you know, right now, you could go online for about five, six hundred bucks and buy uh, an identity. It's, I don't even know if it's online, it might be even like local, but uh, what it comes across as for us is application. So, based off fill out an application and your thing, and, and you're going to have uh, uh, 200000 in the bank of the, the bank statement I'm providing. I'm going to have the story about I'm selling this property with, uh, in Highland Park with, with 100% equity on it. Um, I'm working this job where I'm making uh, six figures. And uh, I'm moving into, uh, and I'm moving from one place to another. Now that story lines up, but it's not the person that's applying. It's, it's uh, Susie Jones that literally has a house in Highland Park that literally makes uh, has a good job at uh, at Tyson Foods or whatever. It's really making that. All those documents that are coming across are fake. The bank statement showing the hundred grand, the pay stubs that they're all fake, and uh, the the license uh, it's fake, and the the. What I see landlords uh, get, they get blinded. Because like, oh man, 800 grand score, 100 grand in the bank, I've been trying to rent this place for two weeks, like they slam dunk. Like, and they, they, they like let go of all their senses and, and they, they end up uh, pushing through the system. And, and these scam scenarios, even if um, you start pushing back, they have a technique for that. They start like they start uh, they start pushing back like, what the heck? I got this good. Are you being unfair and this and that? And so they start pushing back harder. So it's like, all right, well that's good. I don't want to lose you, man. Like and and, uh, and so they, they play this game and you, you give them the keys and all of a sudden they either stop paying or some of these people in the scam are people that can't get approved. So they're basically buying an identity just to get somewhere to live and they might try to pay, but they ultimately fall apart because they don't have that single figure job. They don't have six figures in the bank. So it, it's. Uh, this is probably the biggest one that's out there, and I'm seeing, I get a call to the property manager all the time where people start explaining the scenario, I'm like, oh, I don't know what happened, and I start laying them out. I'm like, all right, so let me guess, did you defense when you did this, and you tried getting in, and they wouldn't let you in, and now all of a sudden your neighbor's telling you there's all these people, other people living there. And so it's a, it's a fairly, uh, it's happening all over the city, I know that for sure, and it's happened in the suburbs as well, too. A anyone have this happen to them? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we caught him, but we didn't, we didn't sign the lease, but we almost did. Yeah, so it's, uh, how do we vet against that? Well, I think uh, if you follow your system, uh, you know, and you really are, are looking at all these things, there's always a lot of red flags. Um, the red flags are um, too good to be true, right? We, our parents all thought us that were a kid. <laughs> Why are you renting if you're doing so great? And if you, you know, there's, there's uh, some just weird um, type of like movements. It's like, hey, I'm moving. I'm moving from here to here for my job. But it's like, hey, your job is actually close to your older house. Um, but then you start looking at these people, um, you can usually find, if you're, you're doing your research online and you're, you're Google them, you usually find the same exact person with almost the same story somewhere else. But you're only doing that after you're, you're getting like these red flags of like the two good to be true. 
that, that license is uh, fake as well too, so you can see some of the discrepancies with that. Now for us, what we did, we, there's a service out there called Findings, but they, 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 they do the face recognition thing, they, do the, they scan the documents. Um, it's amazing, a fake, a fake Bank of America and a real one, side by side, you can't tell the difference in the blind eye. But there's little, I don't know if you call watermarks, or little mm -hmm. markings that, uh, that you know, when you run it through the machine, it'll detect it right away. What you call? Find what? Find digs. Find digs. <clears throat> oh, so then you start looking at the payroll. So uh, you can look at you know, ADP. Like these, they're copying the pay stubs, man, and, and they do a horrible job at it. So you'll find math errors. Um, you know, ADP, you'll, you'll find the, the mark in a different place than your traditional ADP. Uh, missing, you know, like, it'll say ADP on the bottom, but it won't have the logo. We all know ADP has the logo on the corner of everything. Um, you know, they'll, they'll, on, their, uh, <laughs> on their actual pay stub, it'll say direct deposit, but they don't have a bank statement that, or they, don't have a, they might not have a bank at all that they're showing. That, that 100 grand sometimes is in this 401k that they're uh, plan that they're cashing out. Um, and they're very defensive when you start drilling into them. Uh, Red Butter, is anyone, Red Butter is another one uh, like Fine Jigs. Red Butter is actually, if anyone's ever worked with Tom Raleigh, a uh, fiction attorney here in Chicago, that's his company, Red Butter. Do you use Red Butter? Uh, we use Fine Jigs. Fine Jigs. So it's uh, similar. Now, what's cool about uh, something like Red Butter or Fine Digs is it ties your, they want you to, uh, what's the right word, tie your bank account to uh, the application, the great bank account. It also gives you a report on, on their history of their expenses. It, it verifies their income versus their, uh, their paychecks. I put, I have an article, I have two articles on here. I put one on Bigger Pockets. I'll give you guys a second here. I wrote more about this specific scam because I'm watching, I think it's one of the biggest problems we have right now. And that put one on bigger pockets as well, too, if you guys want to check that out. I'll be faster. I'm glad I'm for you guys. Everyone get it? Okay. Cool. I'll come back to it then, too, if we have to. Dumb decisions, we were talking about earlier, a lot of the problems we create. Um, just diving in, you know, I referenced this book here, uh, Road Life Stupid. Um, anyone read this? Awesome book, man. Uh, it's a uh, guy in his 70s now, but he kind of goes through all the different mistakes he's made uh, over time. Virtual freedom, anyone have virtual assistants here? If you're, if you're considering on getting a virtual system, system uh, you know, whether you're doing a wholesale, or you're just trying to, you know, anyone know John Warren here? Like John Warren has his entire property management company, he's running it with people uh, virtually. And uh, it helps it to be more affordable, you can have more staff, you can do more stuff, but as you're growing your business, you don't always have to uh, hire, the next hire doesn't have to be $75,000. So you can hire a guy for $10 an hour, 20 hours a week. So if you're ever interested in that, this is like a great virtual freedom, it's like a 101 like on how to work with virtual assistants. I want to not, spell out what that is, what a VA is. So VA is just basically uh, uh, a virtual assistant. Yeah, it's, it's just an assistant that's virtual. So for our property management company, we have about 20, uh, we call them RTMs, remote team members, that uh, work uh, uh, remote. Uh, most of them are in Mexico. Another great book, Who Not How. Anyone read this? Oh man, these are great, these are low-hanging fruit for you guys. These are great books. Who Not How. We all spend so much time just trying to figure out how to figure something out. Go find someone that knows how to do it already. And either pay them or make them do it for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, evicted, you guys read that? All right, man, this is great. So Evicted is a great, uh, it follows around four investors in Milwaukee. Now, after you read this, you're gonna wanna go up to uh, Milwaukee and start investing there based on their <laughs> eviction process. But uh, it's a good book to just kind of understand uh, what eviction does to a neighborhood. You know, some of the things when I was talking to you before about you know the, the person trying to squeeze in there and trying to bat up against and stuff like that. Gap and Gain, uh, another good one. I'm a big Dan Sullivan fan. Go-Giver, um, uh, you know, I, I do all this to try to give back as much as I can, and the Go-Giver is uh, a good book, and then a servant. Ooh, oh, sorry.
I don't know about you guys, I, I struggle reading, but I listen to audiobooks and everything. So. That's it. Create your own luck and bring value to others. Um, if you guys, uh, I got a couple of things here. If you guys want that rental matrix, uh, I'm asking this is my ask for turn. Leave me a five star review. Say I did something good for you, and then uh, I'll and then send me uh, an email and uh, my email's right there, and I'll uh, send it over to you. And then of course podcast. So. Any, any questions? Yeah. Uh, so with that scam, uh, the way I caught it was by running his number forewarn and the yes. name. Yes, that's another trick, um, yeah. Yeah, also forewarn, uh, you find out a lot of information that doesn't necessarily come up on uh, what they apply. Uh, but are there any other ways? I know I'm, run, I'm leasing out a unit right now, and the guy I'm working with, he, he asked for pictures of their ID and social security number. Uh, their social security, is that, is that why he did it? Uh, so we will ask, um, so it's a, a tactic we use, is like if there's a red flag and we're like, ah, oh, this isn't adding up, we'll say, hey, listen, your, your, your stuff's not coming up in the system, you know, they're asking us to confirm results, can you just send us a snapshot of, of that to make sure it lines up? And that's another way to catch them there. He said forewarn, is, is anyone else use forewarn? Forewarn. Forewarn. F-O-R-N. Oh, yeah. Oh, for showing, yeah. It's great. Uh, if you guys want, if you guys, uh, we did a podcast episode. Uh, it was just like a 15 minute uh, short one on the, the, how good that is. When we record that podcast, uh, me and Tom were joking about how we we're looking up each other, and, and the lady calls up. She's like, "My boss is gonna yell at me. You gotta take that out." Like, <laughs> cool. Anything else? Uh, what if you had a landlord just, that's just using like Zillow's complication process? Should have you have any thoughts about how how they do their application process? I'm not 100 uh, percent familiar with their application process. Um, they they got to be. Uh, I, I don't know. I I can't even speak to that. But one thing I would say: um, is anyone using a mail here? So one, one thing I realized, if uh, you have properties in Cook County, um, they, they're not, up, I, I talked to the guy at Vail last week, but their Cook County lease is not in, in uh, relation to RTL right now, so be careful on that if uh, you have some. If you're in Chicago, you're fine. Their Chicago lease is great, but. Uh, I just wanted to say that their certain process is not good. It's awesome or it sucks? No. Oh, okay. I heard two different, really opposite <laughs> things there. I wasn't sure which one it was. All right. Um, I got a question. What screening software are you using? I, I use Zillow. I feel like it's lacking. And then also, are you asking for links to their social media? No. Uh, you usually find it. I mean, that's how we actually go through our own video design. So we do not ask for it. All right. And we like to always, uh, another kind of thing we like to do is LinkedIn is uh, for professionals kind of seeing how their jobs line up. And some people just don't keep their LinkedIn updated, but we always like to kind of like, hey, can you, you know, this is coming with a red flag. Can you, can you tell me why this doesn't line up with what your application does? And we kind of, kind of like at least make them squirm to make sure that no other red flags come out of their squirming, so. Do you see fake LinkedIn uh, profiles? Um, no, no, I don't. So in that scan that you have, um, the, the, we find the real LinkedIn uh, profile, um, it, it's just a totally different person. So the picture is usually the one they have. So we're looking for ways to speed up, you know, the approval process beyond like maybe going through the HR department that's going to be just really slow, uh, or for a landlord that's going to be really slow. And I don't want to like reduce the amount of vetting that I do, but at the same time, you're going to say like, I got signed on the spot. Well, the find so uh, findings and like rent butter, those type of things, you have your you're that much closer to being able to get to that sign on the spot moment because they're literally tying in their bank account, their, their future chances of potentially uh, not paying you, and it ties in all this data based on their checking account activity uh, to at least give you some of the financial uh, security, and it's all spit in the credit score. In, the, in their background all the time, uh, unless you're um, But uh, 
it kind of gives you that gets you a step closer to that. But uh, and you can put them through on the spot, like yeah, you can, yeah. I have a question. Sure. People who don't have papers, um, is there like some kind of fair housing thing for them? How do you screen them or anything? Just uh, people do not have papers. How do you screen them? Um, for us, we try to, uh, you know, we just have certain pockets that that's that is that's those things happen, and we will we don't have anything written with, down with it, but we'll end up just trying to get an absorbent amount of prepaid rent, um, or we always try to work with them. Um, yeah, I, I probably we probably had uh, whether it been Europe, European um, uh, or, or Hispanic, like we. A few dozen we've done, like we've never been burned on it. So we have a checklist to kind of like what we check and our minimum requirements for how much we will let them uh, uh, move in with, but uh, we've never been burned. So it just kind of having some sort of process for that uh, is how it's healthy. So uh, one thing that I just uh, realized that I didn't mention is that a few times I had an issue like um, somebody will apply and uh, they will be working for a company like Walmart. You want to do a, a, a employer supervisor verification, and all they give you is this like third party company's website, and you have to pay $100 to get this verification. And so, you don't necessarily want to spend 100 bucks on somebody that you don't even know if you're going to accept or not. But you know, the company is so corporate that they won't even respond to you. There's no real supervisor like Amazon or Walmart, and this person is just like another number in that company, and all they have is like that number to put into the website to pay $100. So how do you kind of like figure out like if this person is legit or not like without paying 100 bucks? So we had that situation with Walmart too, and what we ended up doing is have them give us a, a copy of their badge. That, that was one way. It's like there are certain uh, screen, they have the badges that like with the electronics to get into doors. Um, that was one. We made them do that, and we made them get a letter from their uh, have their supervisor send us an email because the people like so it happened to us too at Walmart, and uh, I think those two things gave us the uh, the peace of mind that. Uh, it tied with the pay stubs and all that, that this is legit, so. The badge is another big one uh, for trying to, if you're trying to just ask for a little more, just kind of make them jump through hoops, so. Especially if they're working for a big name brand company, so. And they show their, show their work badge? Yeah. A lot of those have like the different access uh, <coughs> things on it, so they don't have one that's like, yeah. it, Listen, those are the scenarios where you're like, hey, can I get a badge? And they're like, oh, well, you know, I left it in my car. My sister studies down in Birmingham. It's like, all right, come on. <laughs> you know, I, I think a lot of, uh, you know, we always take those, uh, you know, we're, we, we call it drilling. <laughs> but we, it always comes off very like, oh, this, you, know, you know, our, our uh, approval team just had a couple more questions. Can you just help us with these two things and I can get in and we get you approved? And, and you know, in the meantime, they're 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 scared up at that point. But we're trying to approach it, being very. Uh, um, and, and then when they start coming back and pushing back, it's a lot of times you can start telling what you're dealing with at that point. Scam tenant or not, a pain in the ass tenant is the same uh, kind of uh, thing there. On renewals, uh, how much can we raise the rent on a renewal? I, I think uh, in Illinois, there's no. Uh, ceiling on what you can raise the rent. What you have to worry about is how much notice you give for raising the rent. That's what we're up against around here. That's 60 days, right? Um, it I, yeah, I believe if they're the, 60 or 120 days. So if they've been there for more than three years, you have to give 120 to us. More than three years. It, it, is that not follow RTO as well? No. Okay, all right. Well, you, you, you know that. So, so in Chicago, that, that's how you worry about it. Now you could give notice. You know, say say you're in 30 days and you give notice and, and you want to raise rent. It just can't start till you've actually passed. Uh, so they might go into the renewal term, but that first month or two you can only charge the rent or your rate, and you can't increase it till that time period's up. Mm -hmm. But the notice of non-renewal needs to be served. It's a good attorney question. Um, I'll tell you what our mindset is with that. Um, it depends, right? So if we are afraid that someone's not going to leave, and like, we're like, hey, I mean, this guy, we're, we're doing this because this guy's paying the ass, and we don't want to renew him, and he's going to be a jerk about this, then we'll probably send the, spend the 85 bucks to use a process server. 
if we uh, if it's just hey let's see, you know we've been talking about this year and we know you're moving and, and, and uh, we should officially tell you that we're not gonna renew it and here it is please reply you got this and then you reply they got it and you're, you're good but if you have if you there's any thought that you might have to go file for eviction based on that notice then you want to pay the 85 bucks who use process servers here I, I'm big on that that 85 bucks for not having to go figure out where the hell you're at like that, that's a uh, it's a good way to buy your time back Question back over there. I was just wondering what the uh, Costa thing you mentioned. Yeah. I was just wondering how you spelled it or what exactly that was. Uh, it's a floor plan. So you could do 2D rendering floor plans. Um, yeah, like with it. C U B I C A S A. So for us, we have, uh, I mean, they all have roles. So they're not even going to pass. So like our HR department, our, our recruiting department is 100% uh, in Mexico. Uh, but they come to all the meetings. They're it's so cute. <laughs> it's like the cutest thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I almost want to hear you burp, like, see what comes out. Um, yeah, so they have defined roles uh, within the organization. And, uh, you know, we have one guy, all he does collections. Like, all he does all day long is just all bus shops. But he's got a background in collecting for like 20 years. So, and then you mentioned Chat GPT. Have you, have you found ways to use chatbots and things of that nature to handle a lot of the like, basic questions? Like, I, I, I was researching how to use it for basic questions. You know, you've got a hot list of, uh, you know, it's just a deluge. You get hit with a deluge and just respond to it. So, um, we have not found a way to do that. Uh, we're actually looking for one uh, AI for our website. But where we started using, uh, um, we talked about customer service earlier, where we pretend it's all mad or angry or frustrated or something like that. We'll basically, like, Listen, this is fun. It's almost fun activity where it's like, a tenant calls you up and they're totally angry about something and you just want to tell them what they think. You could basically go to ChatGPT and say, please tell them a nice customer service uh, the following. Huh? I can't believe you would have done that. That's the stupidest thing ever. You can do rant on whatever you really want. So you get some therapy on it too. And it'll spit out like this very professional thing that you copy paste and send back to the tenant. Like, <laughs> um, or that, that's the fun part of it. But you could just take what they said, their email, and say, please provide a professional response. Uh, um, based on us being having empathy or whatever, and it'll nice. That's that's uh, hundred character, hundred uh, words long, and it'll type something out, and you can send it back. So less thinking, I guess, for that. Okay. Anyway. Guys, we're still going to stick away. around for a good hour, so go ahead, keep networking. If you got to go, no problem. If not, keep networking. All right. You're a brave man with that coffee. <laughs> it seems like caffeine is too much. Yeah, it doesn't, it usually doesn't do too much. Until I get to bed, and I'm like, why can I sleep? How was it? Pretty good. I since I'm in storage, I'm in a storage facility. I don't know multi family, so it's up right then, bro. Pretty good man. <laughs> yeah, so I just don't manage people, so I feel you I don't have as much uh much head. Right. Are you hoping to meet this guy? It seems like uh I forgot his name actually. The red uh, The speaker. Oh, Mike. Mark. I, Mark. 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 Yeah, I took his name. Right? Yeah. I took his name. He knows the people I work with. So <gasps> really? Got him a little bit. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Let me go grab some food. All right, man.